Hi, I'm Shelly Carver, and today we're gonna show you how to turn this into this, an UltraCal 30 stone mold. We'll show you all the steps and tricks to take your sculpting masterpiece into a casting masterpiece. Our main material is UltraCal 30. It's a gypsum stone that when mixed with water will harden at 6,500 PSI strength. Basically, that just means it's really, really strong. Now, although UltraCal 30 is super strong, it doesn't hurt to get some help from its friend, burlap. Burlap is used as a layer to reinforce the stone, allowing the mold to be lighter, but still keep its strength. And to round everything out, you'll need a mixing bowl or pan to mix the stone, some kind of container to pour water, a cup-like container, a whisk to mix with, a chip brush to apply, and some gloves to keep your hands clean. A cleaning bucket to wash your brushes and pans out to keep costs down and save yourself a headache later. Do not dump your stone or anything that touch stone down your household pipes. Don't do it or your parents will hate you and disown you, and then you have to move elsewhere. Like some other people I heard. With new pipes. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get to it. Be sure to take a minute to look over your sculpture for any imperfections you may have missed, like tool marks, because after this, there's no going back. Time to seal your sculpture. There are many mold releases, but Crystal Clear is our go-to. Normally, we use matte, but glass is all we had on hand. After hitting the deep spots, we give a general mist to the entire sculpture. We will be hitting this with two layers of release spray, allowing it to dry in between coats. Now to mix our first layer of stone, pouring about half an inch or inch of water, depending on the size of your sculpture, begin sifting stone evenly into the pan, being mindful not to build up too high in one spot. Once the mix starts to look like a desert bed, you'll know it's time to start mixing it up. With your whisk or other mixing tool, start mixing in a zigzag pattern, not forgetting to get your edges. You want to be cautious of introducing air bubbles into your mix. But hey, it happens. Don't worry, we'll have a solution for that later on. Once your stone is mixed, begin brushing on your stone with your chip brush. Hitting all the deep parts first, and then working out the stone all over. You may see the stone fish eyeing. Don't worry, that's normal. Just keep working the stone, and once the stone firms up, that will go away. When you have a nice layer of stone on the sculpture, go ahead and hit it with some air in all those deep spots that like to trap bubbles and ruin your sculpture. If you don't have access to air power, that's okay too. Just use a straw and blow, just like this. This first layer is often called the beauty coat. It's the layer that captures all the detail of your sculpture and may be considered the most important layer. Continue brushing up your stone until you run out of stone or the stone begins to kick, making it no longer workable. Always working your layers until it's no longer workable, smoothing out your mold. Now is the perfect time to prep your burlap for the second layer while your stone is stiffening up. Taking a section of burlap to save time, fold it into four layers and start cutting six inch sections. and then cut those down into individual six inch squares. Of course the amount of burlap needed is up to your sculpture, but more is always better. 
Once your mold is barely able to be scratched, you'll know it's ready for the next layer. And you know what that means. More mixing. Instead of a desert bed, we'll be looking more for a desert island consistency. Now you know what to do, mix it up. This time, you don't have to worry so much about air bubbles. This layer is much more forgiving. Before laying down burlap, we want to introduce some fresh stone to your mold. Kind of like a, hey, remember me? Now we're ready for burlap. Taking two squares of burlap, fold them in half and dip them into your mix covering it with stone. Gently wring out some of the stone before applying it to your mold. Apply the burlap on your mold in a dragging motion. Massage the burlap onto your mold and remove any gaps or air bubbles you may be creating. Using two squares of burlap is faster and considered two layers stronger. You may need to go up to four or even five layers, but for this project, we'll just be sticking to two layers of burlap strong. You got this! When handling your mold edges, you don't want your burlap to hang over. But it's not the end of the world if it does. It's mostly an aesthetic rule. After the mold has all its layers of burlap, use the remaining stone in the pan to build up more thickness and clean up the look. Don't worry, you're doing great! Only one more layer to go! Just like before, once the stone is in the magic hardness zone, go ahead and mix up another batch of stone just like the beauty coat. This is the perfect layer to relax to. All the hard work is over. Just simply continue adding stone to your mold, building up the thickness and smoothing out your mold as you go. Wow, look at that. Don't forget to clean your tools in between layers. It'll save money and headaches. Now, just let the mold do its thing. We let it cure overnight, but if you're in a rush, demold time is 60 to 80 minutes. Hard as stone. Time to demold. Flipping the mold over, it's time to clean out all that clay. Whoops! Mistakes happen and we forgot to clean up our mold's edges after each layer since we had filming distracting us. So with a rasp and hammer, we carefully chip away all the ugly edges to make it safer and easier to work with.
Rule of thumb, only use wooden tools so you don't scratch your sculpture. Look at that crystal clear at work. The clay is just flying out. Now the boring part, digging out the bulk of the clay. But eventually, you'll get to the magic spot where the crystal clear comes to the rescue and you'll be able to pull large chunks out. What a difference a little mold release makes. Now to gently remove the eye holders, this is the finish line. Don't panic, just softly wiggle the eyes free. And voila, your mold is 90% clean. Now off to the power washer. Don't worry if you don't have a power washer. All you need is a clean chip brush, water, and patience. And that's it. Now you have a mold that you can cast from over and over again. Thank you so much for watching our step-by-step -step process of making a stone mold. Are there any questions you still have? Something we didn't make clear or went over too quickly? Leave us a comment down below and we'll get back to you. And if you like this video, go ahead and headbutt the like button, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram at Carver for all things cosplay and crafty. Love ya, bye.